this that potent sh- It's your boy Jay Mills. We right back here at Transitions. This is my man Ron Browse. You know what I'm saying? I know him well, but I, I got a lot of questions for him so he could let y'all know a little bit what's going on with him. Yeah. So I want to tell the people what this show is about. This show is about people who you may know for one thing, but they transition to something else. Now I know you, you produced a lot of a lot of joints for me, but a lot of people might not know how you started out in music. So I want to talk about how you started out in music and how you got to be, you know. Eat the boy, like um, all this right here. So I grew up in Harlem. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be a, a rapper, early 90s. Formed a group called Uptown Kids. People who, you know, if you know your Harlem history, I was part of a group called Uptown Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, we got signed to Kevin Childs. Shout out to Kevin Childs. We had to, uh, he had the label Big Boss Records, you know. That's like 92. I'm just letting you know how long I was outside. Yeah, you, I, so, <laughs> I know. I know. I just want you to so, tell the uh, people. So, 92, you know? we running around with Kev. And um, 94, he gets incarcerated. Mm-hmm. He gets incarcerated. I don't really know what to do. You know what I mean? I had this dream of being an artist. So, then I, you know, on a jail call, I asked him where the equipment's at. Because he had, you know, bought some equipment while, you know, during the duration of, you know, him running the label. He told me where to get the equipment from. I got the equipment and started teaching myself how to make beats. Not even, not, like, blindly. I'm just like, yo, where the equipment at? I remember, you know, messing with the equipment or whatever. I get the equipment, start, you know, messing around with it, teach myself how to do production. And uh, I'm doing beats for local people in the hood. And then uh, I bump into Big L one day. Big L walks down 127th Street. I see Big L. I'm like, yo, I got some beats. Because like, I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you, how did you meet yeah. Big L? You know what I'm saying? But you keep running it. Keep running it. Yeah, I met Big L just standing outside <laughs> on Hunt 27. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He walks down the block. Yeah, I promise you, all of the times that I saw Big L, he was walking down Lennox Avenue. Ava Rex, Gore-Tex yeah. on. Yeah. Just, just, just random. So that's how you met Big L. He was walking down. It was weird between Lennox and Fifth. And it's like, it was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. If I can I think I'm cutting school this day. Man, what, what school were you going to at this time? I was in Lower East Side Prep. Lower it was down. Yeah, my my mother got me out of Watley. Said Ooh, you was the, in Watley. You the was teacher was like, You're not gonna be nothing if get him out of here. Yeah, I'm glad they got you out of Watley. Yeah, I was right, in so, Watley. So, so, so Big L is Big L is walking. Did you tell him you make beats or he almost it almost didn't happen because you know he I'm standing with my man. He walks by. We like, yo, that's L. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, yo, yo, I got some beats. You want to listen? He's like, all right. It was kind of like it was kind of like a brave moment because he don't know we could have clocked him upside his head. Yeah, he yeah. or vice versa. So we went upstairs to my mom's crib. I played Ebonics was the first right beat right there on the spot. You just met him on on one twenty seven Linux. And then Big L went up to your mom's crib and you played him Ebonics. Yeah, I want to know if it was premeditated. Did he hear, nah, like, yo, it's crazy. a dude on 27th Street? I don't know if it was that. Yo, this it is was crazy. weird. It was weird. This is crazy. Yeah. So he's like, yo, play some beats. And I played him. As soon as I played him the Ebonics beat, he kind of like, yo, let me get that. I think I got something for that. Like the next week he came through and he said, yo, can I, like, make a demo of it? Because, you know, I ain't had Pro Tools and none of that yet. We did it on a one take on the tape. And um, he was like, yo, let's go to D&D and record it. Yo. All right. So, all right. So, I, before we get deep into the story, I want to know what was the transition like? Because I know rapping was your first love. Yes. That was like, and you know, coming from where we come from, you either going to make it to the NBA <laughs> or you going to be like a rapper. So, I think for you to say that not even for you to say for the, your main story like of your of the Ron Brown story to be producing it's yeah. like damn for you to give up your first love and have to try something else what was that like was that like a mental thing or was it just kind of like you were so young you just was like let me just try something yeah, I was else. Just like, it didn't let even me become I, mental to you at that time I remember messing with the equipment like we had just being like a low house 
in the Bronx, and um, the equipment was there. Yeah. And you know what the, equipment? What equipment? Like an MPC, an MPC record player. So it would just be there, and I know like they, my my friends would be asleep, and I'd be in there like, yo, let me see. Joint is kind of interesting. And then I know when he got locked up, I was like, yo, where the equipment at? I you think still I want that yeah, urge, that, that urge to like see what that part was about, like the production part. And I and I thought like the beats we was getting as a group was kind of like, eh. So I was like, if I was to do it, this would I this would be my approach. I felt like beats in the early nineties, beats had a lot of um instrumentation. Yeah. So I was like, yo, if, if we could if, if I simplified it. If I simplify it, it'll sound hot. So that's why my beats at the beginning were more simplified, more more open just for artists to come rap. It wasn't a lot of instrumentation and stuff like that. So aside from the whole Big L thing, how did you get into, because you just explained how you met Big L. Yeah. That was hanging a crazy out, story. Just hanging that, out that's, that's, that's crazy. You met Big L just hanging out like that. Um... How did you get into the the music business? Because I know at this point you're still making beats. You said you was probably cutting school. You took them up to your mom's crib. So at yeah. what point do you... It Was Big L the first rapper that you produced yes. for in the music yes. industry, industry? Yeah. So that was the first check you got? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. You know what? I, rest in peace, L. Yeah, definitely. I, definitely didn't, I was blind. I was L. going into business blindly. I remember him coming to the crib. It was night. He threw me a little 1500 for the beat. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, like, good looking. He didn't have to do that because I nah, was blind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know I was supposed to be getting, you know, paid for the beat or whatever. I was just in it just for the art. So he threw me a little couple dollars at that time. I'm like, oh, this is good money right here. Yeah, yeah. Needed that. Thanks. So it then it became business after he passed away. Yeah. Because then the albums go gold. I'm still blind. Like, oh. Then I met my man D. D was like, we in the studio. He's like, yo, you know the album went gold? I was like, yeah. He's like, bro, <laughs> you got money out there. You did four joints on this album. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh. He's like, I'm going to get you a lawyer. I ain't ASCAP, nothing, BMI, nothing, nothing. you ain't know nothing. He's like, I'm going to get you a lawyer. He got me a lawyer. Then I kind of learned, you know, publishing, um, Mechanical royalties, royalties, the fee. So I was able to get all that that back money. Mm. All right. So, at what point did you decide? All right. I don't even want because I was about to get to the money app. I don't want to get the money app. Oh, yeah, that was before that. No, oh, no, that was after. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it like? Because was Ebonics the only song you did? No, that wasn't the only song you did. Ebonics, you know? size of what was the was you ever in the studio with me? Yes. Bill? What was the studio sessions like? Before we go on to everything else, what was the studio sessions like being in a studio session with Big L from being the kid that saw him walking on the block and going up to your mom's crib? What was the studio sessions like? Because I'll never know what a studio session was like with Big L. Oh, yeah. I don't um, think many people will ever know what a studio session was like with Big L. Harlem, you know, regular ha- Harlem stuff like jokes. Um, he might tell you. He might give you some insight about his relationship with a yeah. girlfriend or something like that. Like, yeah, yo, this my is girl. Crazy. It was one time he's like, yo, my girl's out of town. She was with a nigga, man. <laughs> <laughs> had to cut her off. <laughs> they like humanized them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's like, oh, yo, I had to cut her off, me. Like, it, but it was like fun, and it was just like, oh. Was, I remember one time he's like, yo, we gotta take the train to the studio. And you like the train? No, you know? no. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Cause I'm thinking, he thinking like, he like, I ain't got it like that. We, you didn't know the train. I'm and like, as hey. kids, we, I'm thinking this Big L, this MVP. Yeah, 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 yeah. This like, he's letting me know like it ain't there. It ain't like that. I'm trying to get there. We hopping on the train. I'm like, all right, bring the NPC on the train. We just size him up. That's why it's this rare footage on YouTube. This is rare. F- uh, me and him in the studio. His man just happened to have the camera that day. Yeah. And recorded L going over his verses. I'm on the drum machine. Yeah, that was a, a moment. Rest in peace, Big L, yeah. most definitely, most definitely. So, all right, let's get into what, Money Ave, you know what I'm saying? How did yeah. you create 
Money Ave and tell the people what Money Ave was. Um, created Money Ave. I mean, T Rex was like somebody brought T Rex to me. My man Jerry, shout out to my man Jay Black. He's like, yo, it's this kid, hood, he rap. But he was just wild, disrespectful. Like, right? it's to curse, him, curse my man out, call him all kind of name. I'm like, who's this, this young dude? Like, just cursing grown men out all the time. I'm like, all right. He was just coming to the crib, rap, rap. He really didn't really know about like song format, so I would teach him for, song format and whatever. And he would rap. It was cool. We was pushing, and then you know I kind of met uh, Paper Over because I used to watch Paper Over because mm-hmm. that was Kev's son. So I knew Paper Over. My man said he used to watch. Yeah, pop. I used to watch Paper Over. Pop, that's crazy. <laughs> um, and shout out to all these, all these uh, people too. Shout yeah, out to Pop, shout out to over, Rex, uh, shout out to everybody. These Sevilla. are my homies, and y'all know I love y'all. Shout out to Via. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to let him tell the story. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. just act like I can't <laughs> glaze over the story. I'm, I want him to tell the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So somebody introduced my man Lim introduced me to Severe. So I, I just knew like movements was like the thing. So I'm like, yo, let's just do this as a collective, and. Um, you know, everybody had that, like, yo, if it's a bunch of us, let's do the Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah. We all going to get a bag. Because cause honestly, when I met you, you know, did you have Money Ave yet? Was y'all doing Money Ave yet? Because rest in God, God bless the dead. We met through through D. Ferg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Ferg, D. Ferg put us in the studio. D. Ferg is ASAP Ferg Pops. Yeah. So, uh, legend in Harlem. And he was trying to, he was trying to put something together and somehow... Browse was the person that was doing the beat for what he was doing. It was a bunch of us, yeah. like uh, a bunch of us from Harlem, and he was just trying to put something together. And then he passed. And and like when you just said Lib, uh, shout out to Lib. Yeah, yeah. uh, Lib kind of kept try, tried to keep everybody, yeah, you know, working and keep good yeah, relationships yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff like that. And I just remember me and you, we just started banging out. Yeah. But I wasn't from downtown. See, you was like 127th. That's in between. I, yeah, half. We, we 42nd, 44th, 43rd. And then Rex and them is like 16th, yeah. 18th. But so. I grew up on I grew up on 120th in Manhattan Avenue, too. And that, well, that's money ass. Yeah, that's then what, I moved know. to Lenox. 27th for Lenox. All right, all right. Got dark over there. Yeah, but <laughs> but but the but I, I wanted to say something about the money ad thing because... Yeah. My lady, you know, she from she from Cali, mm-hmm. and remember we was in the car and I was playing five thousand. Now she's looking at me like I'm crazy because yeah. I'm going crazy at the mill bank. They call me yeah, Avon, yeah, yeah. To get money with all my might, and she looking at me like I'm bugging riding down to one ten <laughs> or the one hundred five, listening to five thousand. But I'm trying to tell her and trying to explain to her that that was a moment like the DJ Webstar, like Ron, you you created a sound for kids of our of our town to dance to when it wasn't just the Harlem Shake anymore. It was the Light Feet. Light and, feet you know, yeah. the Tone Wop and Aunt Jackie and Chicken Noodle Soup. And then they just started making fusions of dances. So, once again, that was a transition. You may not look at it like that, but yeah. from doing the beats for Big L and even a lot of the stuff that we did, because me and Browse got yeah. a bunch of bangers that you could go look up. But from doing songs for Jay Mills and uh, Money Ave and stuff like that. When you got into the the young, what 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 made you transition into? I need music at the block parties. Um, I need music at the Kennedy Center parties and the YMCA parties. Because uh, at one point you just tapped into yeah. Because I was, was super just hardcore. Snap, snaps and bongos. Yeah. Just, um, that's it. Shout out to Webstar. Webstar definitely, definitely came to me like, yo, I got these kids that dance, which eventually was the swag kids. Mm-hmm. They got these kids that dance. Yo, let's do let's cut a record on him. So I'm like, ah, right, you know, whatever. I had that beat. He heard the beat. It was like, hey, we're gonna use this joint right here. And then that's how the five thousand we we brought them to the studio and cre- and they had the whole concept of the uh the five thousand. That's the joint when he dropped to the floor and all. it was going crazy. <laughs> it was lit. So it was yeah. lit. It, so I was like, oh, this is a frequency right here. Uh-huh. Um, you know, going to King Dome, going to the Rucker, you seeing people dance. So I was like, all right, let me be the. I started like, let me be the soundtrack for that, for that frequency. So that's what I just started doing like that. Yeah, you was you was heavy with that, and I want to give you a shout out as somebody from Harlem. Like I yeah. remember moving around, and it's like, 
Yeah, we had Bring It Back. We had Who. Yeah. We had so many joints. But what was it like when you went to the movies to see Get Rich or Die Trying and your beat came on? Because I remember when I was in there and that shit said, <laughs> first of all, I was sitting there like, damn, do I got this beat? Did he give me this beat before and I passed on it? Like, was I thinking it was too slow? That shit said, brum, brum. What was that moment like for you sitting in the movie theater knowing you made that? Like, you created the intro to Get Rich or Die Trying movie. Um, getting a call that, that 50 picked that beat was like, oh, all right. Then it was like, yo, you know, Dre mixed it. I was like, oh, all right. That was crazy. So yeah. so Dr. Dre, Dre mixed it. he put some final yeah, yeah, mixes yeah, yeah. on some, like, some oh, sign right. that you put together. Um, you you got you to gotta pop your did. shit a little bit more, man. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the motherfucking check was the the it don't be all like oh you get this for the for the joint being in the movie that's dope it's like oh this that was your first crazy. placement in the movie yeah first placement in the movie that's a hell of I've a been place. chasing it ever since <laughs> it's, it's gonna come don't worry about it don't worry about yeah, it yeah that 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 movie money was different I was like oh this is different than and then you know it all depends on how long the, the record is in the movie how much you get paid but it actually played two times in it at the mm-hmm. beginning. And then, you know, when 50 trying to work on... Yeah, when he getting himself back yeah, together. Yeah, get back together. So I was like, oh, this is like the Rocky end. That's, I ain't going to lie. That's, that's, a, that's a crazy be, look. He be um, performing it now, and it be people be sending Still, me clips. Because you got to remember, it's from the movie, so that's yeah, always yeah, yeah, going to yeah. be crazy. Um, all right, so from the Get Rich or Die Trying moment to being... That's your first movie placement. Yeah. And you said when you heard 50 pick the beat. Ether, right? Yeah. How did Nas get the beat for Ether? Uh-huh. Matter of fact, matter of fact, hold on. Before you tell me how did Nas get the beat, when you, what was it like creating that beat? Did you think that that beat would get to somebody of that stature? Was you still like, I'm going to get this to Rex. I might get this to Mills. I might get this to this one or Banks. Or, you, you, you know, know like, was um, you thinking like that? Did you ever think well, it would get First of all, I think I was getting high at that time. Weed, smoking weed, what? not high. You used weed. to smoke yeah. weed. So Never I think did. I was high. And you used to look at me crazy when I said, you like, damn, man, you smell like a bunch well, of That's weed. when I stopped. So oh, I man. think I was high one night, and I just remember messing with the strings and creating it one night. And then anytime somebody would come, I'd be like, yo, listen to this. It's great. And actually, it is a demo of Rex. It was Rex and his man oh, just, wow. just saying any lyrics they could think of it on this track. But then, um, you know, Rex always was cool. I was like, yo, uh, Nas took this. All right. Yo, 50 took this. All right. Yeah. I had to take him off bad, like, beats. He's like, God. God but, um, yeah. I would, anybody would listen to this joint. Okay. So, fast forward. I have to what always tell us. What did you make the Ether beat on? What, what, what? The core keyboard and the MPC 2000. Got you. They bring hip hop. Shout out to hip hop. They bring hip hop to my crib. I guess hip, they were like, all right, yeah. let me hear, and, and, let me and hear hip, this the guy, he's the guy. And Hip was active in the street. Yeah, yeah, so like, they was like, he's the guy, all right, let's, let me hear what you got. I played the joint, I mem- I played Ether for anybody who came. I played it to him, I was like, yo, if you could get this to Jay, it'll be appreciated. So you me. you really wanted to give the Ether beat yes. to whole first? I wanted to give it to anybody. <laughs> Who was gonna give me some money for it? It was placement time. Yeah, you was getting a lot of placements at that time. So you no, this is my first placement after Big L. What? Yeah, Ether was right after Big L. So from the time Big L passed, you didn't get no placements. No, Big L passed in '99. Yeah, Ether came out 2001. So it was two years, like a two year. All right. Was I'm in the midst of that time? Was we working? Nah, I'm not sure. Nah, I don't think so. No, we was working before Ether though. Before Ether? Who came out before Ether on my buggy? Nah, Ether I don't came think out so. 2001. Nah, who didn't come out before that then? Nah. He came after? I met you before Ether, yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. All right, so keep keep going. Yeah, you, get so, beat, you get to beat the Nas. No, you think? Um, at that time, like right after Big L joint, nobody didn't really know me. So I met my manager. At the time, Fuzz, he was like, yo, we got to go outside. Nobody don't know you. Yeah. You did these big L joints. You got to come outside. So we trying to sh- shop beats. And um, at the time, remember, it was producer driven. Like, if you ain't Swizz, Tim, Pharrell, you ain't, you ain't get, getting you ain't on these projects. The, you ain't even getting in the session yeah, to play yeah, your yeah. shit. So we snuck it to his travel agent. 
We gave it to Nas Trap. Yo, can you slide this beat CD to him? Then we got a call like, yo, Nas pick number 17. <laughs> if he picked 17, I he mean, he to got deep into yeah, yeah, the CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He picked seven. I was like, oh, I'm, but I'm still on the block. Oh, I'm like, nah, I ain't pick no beat. Then he calls me to come to the studio in that December. He's like, yo, they, they he's like, yo, now nah, I want you to come, Ron, come to the studio, listen to the joint. So I come there. He cool, he chilling, eating fruit. It's not even amped up. He just like, it's this. just, a just chill him. Because he already know what he did. Yeah, he got the engineer there. He's like, yo, you know, the, the engineer, he, he don't know what's going on. He'll play him the joint. He play it. I hear the F J Z. I'm like, nah, nah, listen. I'm like, nah. I was, if I would have made that beat when that shit said boom, boom, fuck, Drake, I, I'd have been like, yo, but I didn't put that in there. He put that. So you Nas, know it's like, Nas put the F J Z in there. So I'm like, when I hear the intro, I'm like, I see where we're about to go with this. But let me keep listening. Then it's just, you know. So you just had to sit there through all the yeah. verses and just yeah. like. Hove hot. So what's the first time. what's the first thing that Nas said when it go off? Huh? What, what's the first thing? When, when it went off? Go, yeah. You like it? <laughs> 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 you like it. This nigga just asked me if I like. Oh, <laughs> you you like the record? I do. What do you want? Man. I guess. This is my first big placement. Like, you know what I mean? So. Did you ever get any placements with Rockefeller after that? No. No, not to this no. day. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Oh man. But that's a that's a pivotal piece of But you know what? I, history, I always man. tell people you I was in a book. session with before either. Yeah, yeah, it was before. I was in a session with Beans. And um Beans is just turning down all next one. <laughs> next one. I'm like Shout Next out to one, beans, shout out to Beans. But he he gave me a hard time that night. Yeah, he, I had a thirty clip too. He wasn't feeling none of that. He, next one, next. I then the CD was kind of skipping. I remember Jay Z coming like, "Yo, you got to turn the <laughs> down a little bit so it won't skip." Then he disappeared in the smoke. Uh, that was it. Did you ever get a chance to work with Nas again after Ethan? Yeah, I did. Last real nigga alive Dope. on the that, Godson that, album. That, that's that's one of my. I didn't know you did. People that. call it Eat the Part Two. Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ, he's just, that was one of Let my favorite Let me tell you about my big I didn't even know that you did that. Who you thought kicking the door was for, oh, but, but that's, that's my heart. heart. Yeah. That's, shout out to Nas, man. That, that's a big piece of history. Yeah. Now, at that point, you made another transition. You know, I, I tell you, I do my history, I do my homework. So, at this point, you done made two transitions. He done transitioned from being a rapper to being a producer uh, to being a super producer producing some of the biggest songs in hip hop at the moment. And then I came to your house one day and you played me Pop Champagne. Yeah. I remember we had recorded like three joints and then right before I left, <laughs> I remember you was going somewhere and when yeah. I was leaving, he was like, yo, I want to play this out. Real quick. Yeah. He was like, you can check this out real quick. And I remember I heard it and the whole time I'm like, I'm like, yo, you know how to do this? <laughs> and you was like, yeah, it's just something I'm trying right now. Uh, and I remember I was like, I forgot who was with me. I don't know. Was it six? six? Yeah, I think it was six. I think six might have been with yes. me, right? And I remember when we left, I said, yo, that shit better than like all this shit I just recorded <laughs> with him. And I remember when we was leaving, we was going down one way and you went down one way and you had the windows down. And you was like, all right, I'll see you later. And you had that shit oh. blasting. And I was just riding like, <laughs> oh, this nigga got one. And I remember after that, you made that transition from yeah. Ron Browse, the producer, to Eat the Boy. Yeah. And it was like pop champagne jumping out the window, A-Rab money. I remember I was in the studio with Wayne, and he was like, yo, your boy sent me something. And I was like, what? And it was the, the winding on oh, me yeah, joint yeah. with Joe. And I'm just like, I'm like, I love to see that. You know, so what made you transition back into being an artist, but yeah. a different kind of artist. Like, Pop what Champagne was that came out like? of desperation. I was going, I was I was low on cash. Desperation? I was like, the money is running nah, out. Nah, man, when I, I went through your house at that time. Listen, you I'm was telling living, you. You was living nice. Listen, you know how music is. You, the, oh, I know. The money was running out, and I'm like, yo, I got to figure something out. I remember just making the record, 
And I was like I said, I would let people hear. They'd be like, "Yo, this joint's crazy." Yeah. You bugging? Put this joint out. The moment you let me hear it, that's what I said. I said, "What were you doing?" And you was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just, I'm just experimenting. I'm just, I don't know. I, I see." You wasn't really like confident. Yeah, about I wasn't it yet. I wasn't. Yeah, you wasn't. Because I got shot about down. I was trying to make this transition. I would go to the DJs. Yo, listen to this. Eh. Was Def or Auto Tune out yet? No, that came after. So Def or Auto Tune came after. Yeah, right. I was like. I was trying, like, yo, what you think about this? Shooting little indie videos. Nah. Then when I did Pop Champagne, I, sh- I caught enough. I'm like, he's like, all right, man. I, like, I'm listening one more time. Come to the Rucker. If it's fire, I'm going to let you know. Well, that's when they used to make us do that. Yeah. If it's garbage, I'm going to tell you. Because this is my second time. Like, yo, listen yeah. to my demo. So I went to the Rucker. I met him up there. Just beep, beep. Him and Cast One was out there. They was like, yo, this joint crazy. I was like, next day, hot. Beep. I'm like, oh, this joint's coming to reality. <laughs> All right. Okay, then it took so, off. So, it was so, going. Yo, so look, so how did it go from the song that you played for me that day in your crib to Jim Jones Oh. Featuring yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And Everybody Jones. wants to know. Everybody shout out right. the gym. So um <laughs> everybody wants to know that. And they get confused Jim about the, it. I promise y'all, Jim is one of the greatest to ever do it. Yes. But he kept it, he kept it so hard. He saw it that he saw the vision. He saw the vision. And I think when Jim, because at first I was like, damn, you let Jim swipe your song. Yeah. And I remember you was like, Nah, it's a, it's a bigger play. It's a bigger yeah. play. And I remember when I seen the video, I was like, I like what Jim did. Because yeah. he didn't swipe your song. No. He took the song to a level that maybe you wouldn't have been able to take at it the time. At, as Ron Browse. At the time. With yeah. your confidence. Yeah, yeah, his yeah, confidence yeah. was, oh, this is that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yours was, you like it? Yeah, 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 it was. So Jim took it and made it a Harlem, st- and it looked like he was stamping you. Yeah, yeah. It looked like Els was stamping you, so it looked like you was coming out with Harlem already Yeah, that was the, that was the you, play. You know? um, I see him. Remember, so remember, I, I am already got it in on mix shows already. Yeah, yeah. It was playing on the radio. Yeah, yeah. so my version by myself was playing on mix shows. I bumped into Jim. Jim like, yo, that joint high. I'm like, well, come and jump yeah, on the let, record. Let, let's do something. Yeah, he's like. Oh, don't tell Jim that. Yeah, so you tell Jim Jones to get on the, the record, and the, the studio record is hot. Is, the studio is booked. Night. Yeah, Jim don't play. He said, "Yo, come to the studio. Come to the studio. Me, him, the engineer. He goes to sleep. Knocks out. Typical Jim. Cold. He probably woke up and did the yeah, verse. So I I'm like, sleep. I'm sitting there. I'm asking the engineer, like, yo, just like this, some type of prank or something. Like, Jim is knocked out he for like an hour or two. Coma. He probably was. That was good haze. Days. He wakes up. Yo, put the mic on. And just go. And I go to the dealer, you know. I'm like, that's Harlem the whole shit, man. Run. But then he do a 24. I'm like, yo, Jim, you're going to do a 24? <laughs> <laughs> he had a vision. <laughs> I said, Jim had a vision. I said, yo, you going to just do 24 bars like that? That's not the song. The song structure is eight, Jim. you like, eight. He did 24. Man, man. I was that like, so maybe champagne. he knew to play before me. Pop Champagne was the one, man. So, and I feel wait. like. He uh, now it's just me and Jim version out. He like yo, we need mm, one more thing okay. on this. I said what? He said we need L's. So L's wasn't on it when nah. Jim did it. We even but go to radio that's, with but that that's version. Jim, that's Jim knowing it's missing something. Yeah, he said he said yo, once L's jump on it, it's gonna be where it need to be. I said all right, we gotta look for L's now. <laughs> we gotta track L's oh, yeah, you down. Gotta find L's. Shout so out to L's. He, you gotta find I remember L's. Go, seeing the one. He's like yo, I gotta go to this house. And get the verse done. Get the verse done. I remember picking up the verse, mixing it, and it was just gone after that. It was just, that record was just gone. Pop Champagne was the one. Yeah, yeah it was but, gone. But it was also the one that helped you transition again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, after yeah. that, you went on a run. Yeah. Like, what was that run like from being the one that produced Ether? You're the one that produced I Whoop Your Head, Boy. What's the word for Kim? Like yeah, you got yeah. all sorts of. At this point, when you become, yeah, yeah. by the time you became that, when I came to the crib, it was plaques up the steps. Yeah, it wasn't just one level. <laughs> yeah, no more. It, we had to go upstairs to do some shit, and there was plaques everywhere. It was cars outside of the garage because it was something in the garage. Yeah, 
So what was it like when now you listening to Hot 97 and it's New Ron Browse, blah, blah, Hot 97, or Power One of New Ron Browse, yeah. shout out to Ron Browse. And it's just like constant. Things what was just that running like? fast now. Like life is now, life is. Because like you said, you made it out of desperation. Yeah. So it's happening now. Now it was but they still coming for beats. Because I was still yeah. coming. I didn't give a That's fuck. That's how you A-Rap money. Boy. I didn't care that you was the Ether yeah. Boy no more. As long as you were still giving <laughs> me beats. Because I remember when yeah. you got brand new on me, I had to be like, hold on, this nigga, bro. I ain't fucking this nigga, bro. I, no more. I don't need no fucking beats. But people, if, if I slighted anybody at that time, it was so much going on at that time. Yeah. So I'm traveling. I got to record. And it's new. I got a deal. I'm like, I'm trying to manage all these things. I got, you know, family, I got personal friends. You're trying to manage all of these things at the same time. You're not home. You're on the road. Women, you're bugging out. You, so you're trying to like, all right, let me try and make sense of all of this. And uh, and uh, right after Pop Champagne, that's when Buster called. and was like, yo, I need a record. And I thought, I, had, I did A-Rap Money, but I tucked it. Because I was like, yo, people going to think this joint is weird. And, um... I, once again, I gave him a CD. I tucked it like number 19. He's like, yo, number 19. That's it. They picking. I'm that's put- how you could tell people was listening <laughs> to these CDs. Because they, they picking right, like 19, 17. Like Ether was 17. Yeah. A-Rap Money was number 19. He was like, yo, number 19. That's it. That's my single. I don't care what you're saying on it. That's it. Man. Recorded it. And that Jane was gone. I remember being in the studio with Jim. Jim was like. You know you shouldn't have gave Buster that A rap. <laughs> <laughs> I said I shouldn't have. You 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 had a you had an incredible run with those songs. You yeah. know what I'm saying with that sound. So let's speed it up a little bit to this era. You know, like what made you get into the doing your own remixes? You know what I'm saying? Because the act bad that like got a lot of people attention. But you was doing this for a few years. That act bad wasn't just like the first one. I think that was. People caught so much attention to that because Flex jumped on it and Diddy, like, made it a real, real thing. But what made you want to start doing the remixes, uh, like, flipping remixes with your beats, your sound, your knock, you know? I don't know. I just I just was hearing the music a different way and wanted to hear, oh, being uptown, going to the, some of the clubs, and it was a bop that everybody just, they just wild out. Drunk, whatever this this bop was, I said I want I'm, I got to put this bop onto um, R and B records. So I, I did like two Beyonce joints. It's like ah, DJ's just like ah, that's yeah, right. that's cool. Um, doing I did a Tim's one, like I was warming up. Then I did the Diddy was like yo, y'all not listening to R and B no more. Y'all not, you know, dancing no more. So then I was like, I, I, I know how to get them on the floor. Did the remix. I, I remixed it. But these are new, new times. We on the internet, everybody on the phone. So I get the, uh, I tell my man, like, yo, let's go to 42nd Street. I'm going to premiere and film it on yeah. 42nd Street. Boom, I did it. Posted it. And DJ was like, yo, what is that? Start asking for it. And Flex and Enough was doing like some battle. Who got the exclusives? And he brung that enough, played that to Flex. Like, yeah, you ain't got this. And Flex was like, I might not have it. But and so I then got I'm it driving. Down. Now I'm doing something. I'm getting calls. Yo, Flex going crazy. Flex going crazy. Keep getting called. Flex going crazy. He on a yo, Diddy, you gotta give Browns fifty thousand for this beat tonight. You need it. People calling me, then I tap in. Flex going crazy. Then that night, Puff was like, yo, let's get it together. Let's get the business right. And I was, he, then he, he called. He's fronting on me. He called me back. <laughs> he had uh, yeah, Shanti and Carisha on there. I'm like, how you do that that fast? He did it he quick. Me, me, oh, I was like, oh, all right. So Flew in the next day for the video. I, I was about to say you did a video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flew in the next day for the video. Where y'all shot the video at? Queens. Yes, and the dancers was there. A lot of people there. That's a good look, man. That, yeah. That's a good look. Oh, no. Let me, he was like, yo, what else you think of me? I said, yo, we need Will Tracks on this joint. Shine the light on yeah. it? Shine the light. I ain't going to lie, Will Tracks, look, I was trying to do a little reel the other day, 
I don't know what's going on, but shine a light on them. It's not in the Instagram music section. When you put Will track, shine a light on them, don't come up. So you might want to highlight them about that. Yeah. So that's why you'll put let's put Will on there to give it that that bounce. He's like, all right, he calling us nine and them. Yo, yeah, we will. Oh, he up. Puff don't sleep. He's like, y'all sleeping? Yo, come on, let's go. Let's go. Where y'all going to sleep? I'm like, yo, man, we're going to be. St- I'm lying. We're st- yeah. <laughs> we studio book for two o'clock. We be there. But, you know, I'm like, yo, where? We got to get in the stool. We got in the stool and got it done, sent it back. That dream's fire. Yeah, yeah. That's a. I wanted to touch on a lot of these different topics because. Once again, the name of the show is Transitions. Yeah. And Brow's done transitions so many. He just explained to you the transition from his first love being rap to meeting Big L on 127th Street to producing for Big L, to being in the studio, to uh, producing for 50, producing for Nas, to making pop champagne out of desperation, which is one of your biggest hits, right? Yeah. I mean, not... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one yeah, of your yeah, biggest yeah. hits. You know... uh, that coming out of desperation, um, making music for the for the younger generation to dance to, then to get into a point where you're doing these remixes, and to now get it to a point where you figured out a way to go viral, you figured yeah. out a way to just get out of. Oh, you see it produced by Ron Browse. A lot of people might not see that many other produced by Ron Browse on the credits, but if you go on Instagram, we could see you. With the MP yeah, out, yeah, yeah. you take it outside, and, you, and that became your thing. Yeah. What made you want to start doing um, that, like showcasing we, in real time? We are. I would see a lot of producers complaining, especially the producers of my my era, getting upset at how things was changing, and uh, like yo, people don't read the back of the. Cre- it's no more credits. No it's more. It's no more. It's no more track lists. Yeah. So like they don't make track lists like, artwork. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, nah, you got to be visible out here. Yeah. It's a new day, it's the phones, everybody in the phone. Y'all going to know yeah, <laughs> I did you, this joint. You, you so got to. I just wanted to be visible online as a as a producer and keep my face out there. And if joints that I did, oh, yo, you going to see me. Oh, he he did the video with him outside playing that joint. So yeah. I just it, It's marketing, too, to keep you, you know. I ain't want to be one of those dudes like, yo... Things has changed, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it is different. Now you got to adapt. You got to move with the time. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to get time. with it. So I'm like, nah, I'm getting with it. So uh, I wanted to ask you, what was one of your favorite sessions that you was ever a part of as a producer? And what was one of your favorite sessions that you was ever a part of as Eat the Boy, as an artist? Favorite sessions as a producer? Um... See, at the beginning, when you, I was still trying to get my name up, they was like, uh, send the beat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you hear it. we yeah. let you hear it later. Yeah. So I didn't really get a chance to be in the studio with, like, Ludacris, DMX, God bless. Um, I didn't really get a chance to be in the session. Only one, you know, Nas, the record sessions wasn't, like, it, like come after he done recorded it. Yeah. To ask me my opinion. Um, so I don't really remember kind of like being in the studio with like creating it. I can't really think at this point. All right. So what was what was your favorite sessions in as a artist? Like people you collabed with and y'all got in the studio together and worked together. Um... Cause I know so many records. Yeah, I know. I I know the sessions where you on the MP and the sessions where you actually get to go in the booth. Yeah, it's different. Um, Yeah, you know. Because remember, like as a producer, I'm I'm cooking up and people like, yo, send me a pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm sending joints. So you know what? Let me get some people that you never worked with. Because you worked with so many people. Yeah. Let me get some people that you never worked with that you looking forward to getting I'm, I'm in the studio I'm looking forward with. to work with, like, the Meeks of the gang, me, Ross. Mm-hmm. I ain't really get a chance to get in the studio with Fab yet. Um, and these is all people that I know yeah. you'll cook some dope, some dope music up with because 
They all spitters. Like, oh. Meek is a spitter. Ross is a spitter. Fab is a spitter. And you make your beats tailored to, yeah. for spitters. That's probably why, like, me and Rex. And yeah, yeah. It, it all started with Big L. So yeah. you kind of tailor make your beats for people to just give it up like that. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of placements came from me. Um, I was a fan of uh, Banks, Lloyd Banks. So I would mm -hmm. be like... Oh, I can you hear. and Banks make you and Banks yeah, yeah, make. Yeah, I did. Help for dope, Banks, dope, Playboy dope, Part dope, One, dope music. Playboy Part Two, the Straight Out of Southside joint was crazy. So mm -hmm. I would be like, "Oh, I could hear him on that joint." And then I was getting did like four, four records for Banks, one for fifty. It been you know Straight Out of Southside. Shout out to Yayo. Yayo was like, "Nah, I'm I'm fucking with you." So. <laughs> um, joints off. I always wanted to do joints for Mary. Give it that bounce. Yeah. Um, I always said you had like a dope sound for if you was to mess with some R&B artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You always used to give me beats. Like, I remember when you started making beats and you'd be like, oh, no, nah, that's the R&B pack. That's yeah. Like, I'd be like, nah, but let me hear those. Like, I like those strings and those. Uh, yeah. Because I, kn I knew a lot of those to become like, the, to, to become great. Like the, you know, the Pharrells, the Tim Lands. You had to get in that R&B bag and. Yeah. So I was like, nah, I gotta get some, get in that bag, man. Okay. And then they're trying to pigeonhole you, cause I remember after eat that, they're like, nah, we just want this hardcore. Like, I was like, nah, I got some happy beats, and that's how I popped champagne king, cause I was like, mm -hmm. so I'm, yo, pick the happy beats. They like, nah. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, y'all don't want to pick the happy beats? I'ma jump on one of the happy joints. Yeah, yeah. And that's how, I, cause I knew, uh, I was getting album cuts. I wasn't getting a single. You know, the mm. single is where the money's at. That's the one. And at the time, the more nicer it sound, the more you could get on radio. Now, everything dark is the opposite. <laughs> everything is. That's, that's what I wanted to ask you, too, like, before we wrap it up. How do you feel about the current state of hip-hop? Being somebody that transitions so many different times with your sound, how do you feel about, like, the drill music, um... The sub the, I don't want to say uh, trap music so much, just kind of like a southern sound, more melodic. You know, you got a lot of artists now. You got like Lil Baby, you yeah. got Dirk, you got Rod Wave. It's not no, this is not necessarily drill. It can be yeah, just yeah. more melodic and not so much boom bap. So, how do you feel about that? I don't. What I don't like is, let's just say the Move One remix. People, but so you get people. Oh, that's a New York record. No, it's a party song. Yeah. Why well, don't pigeonhole it like because the way the drums are structured or whatever, because it's not a trappy song or they'd be like, oh, that's a, that's a New York record. No, it's a party song. Like, yeah. Don't we party all across party the world? Party all over the world. Yeah, so I don't like the pigeonhole of the, yo, that's New York. Yeah. Because like, it's so oh, much you have more. Only be in New York to listen it's to It's so that. much more than just New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get that, but that's what they... That's kind of like what they put on anything that kind of got that knock like that. Yeah. They they put it on like that. Same thing like uh, a lot of music they might say is West Coast music or they might say uh -huh. that's the bass sound or something like that because this it it, it got a snap. It got a it got mm -hmm. a bounce to it. But I, I, I get this. that certain sounds is from a region, but don't pigeonhole it with like nah, we don't listen to that. That's like New York stuff. Like nah. Uh, yeah. All right, so even with that, with that being said, transition into this before we get out of here. Uh, I was talking to you earlier about your song with Two Chains yeah. here in my zone, and I was trying to ask you like, how did that come about? Because I know Two Chains, shout out to Two Chains, he a good dude, yeah. super super good dude, and I know if he, uh, if he connected with you on something, yeah, then you got a plan for it, and I know he got a yeah. plan for I was, it. So I was at a quick, party. Was I, I was randomly by default at a little kid party. And um, I seen the kids wasn't really reacting to much, but they was reacting to like this, you know, which is called like the Jersey Club type mm -hmm. of vibe, you know, the, the Uzi Vert record. They wilding out to this record. And then when they play another record, they'd be like chilling, they eating. But every time they went back to, they wilding out. So I'm like, oh, nah, I, I got to I got to Tap in there with that frequency right there. Mm -hmm. So I did the joint. Shout out to my man Tiger Tom upstate. He like, yo, this joint crazy. I like once again, I'm like, for real? Yeah. <laughs> I 
I just mean, you know, being on the road, shout out to my man Cordega. We um he talking to two chains on the phone. Oh yo, let me out of Yo, send me it. Next you know, wake up the next day. Joins in my phone. I'm like, oh wow. You know, then DJ starts supporting it, kids start dancing to it. It got a certain I start performing it and people wilding. I'm like, oh, this might be a thing. Yeah, you might, I might so, have to you run know, with this. I always try and do stuff my way. Like a sound may be out like, oh, they doing this. I always like to put my my type of style into it. So you know it's you know, I did it. So Well, you definitely did that with a lot of a lot of the music you produced, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Like they say, you ain't gonna hit all your shots, but as long as your percentage yeah. is up there, you always gonna be good. And your percentage is amazing. Yes. I thank you for letting me uh chop it up with you and because I know a lot of people gonna look at me they're gonna be like no it's gonna be interviewing people I don't really know but yeah. I told you I wanted to talk to you about your story and who was crazy too who was one of them Come crazy on, I, I wasn't really gonna <laughs> get into my my stuff like that but who bring it back yo Linux Ave Legend I, I, did a, I did a whole project with Browse called Linux Ave Legend right and I remember being like damn you, I want to be there when you mix it, but he was so like, nah, we're going to record it, and then I'm going to doctor this. Yeah, I know you're yeah. used to doing shit your way, but <laughs> this is how I'm going to do my shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So uh, who was crazy too, man? Uh, I, it was moment, though. Remember we seen, God bless, we seen Stacks, And he was like, yes. Stax, yo, you're going to do a, yes, a, I, a look, minute verse over my rest single? In, rest <laughs> in peace to Stack Bundles. <laughs> Stack Bundles totally killed who and Clue was playing it yeah. every week. <laughs> I was like, God damn, man. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to tell you thank you. Yes, sir. For, uh, just sharing your story with the people. You know what I'm saying? In my Letting zone. Know. Featuring and, two chains yeah, is out right now. Tell them. Tell them on all streaming platforms. Download it, stream it, dance to it. Yeah. And my man is on the road too, right? Yeah, now. we in you LA know? right now. I, I I like the I always told you I like to see people get out. You was telling me the other time you was like, man, I see why you never used to be in. Like once yeah. I got my shit going, I was on the road, man, because I seen it's so it's so much more yeah, than Harlem. Yeah, Harlem yeah. And then once you see it's so much more than Harlem, it's so much more than New York. And then it's so much more than the East Coast. Then it's so much more than the United States. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So once you start seeing all of that, man, it's just a wonderful thing. But I just thank you. For sitting down, telling your story with the people, letting them know how you done transitioned so many different times and letting them know that when you get the one door, just because that door closed, don't mean that another one won't open. You know what I'm saying? The fact. Boy. So, right here on Transition, my boy Ron Browse, man. See y'all next time. Yes, sir.